One of the questions that I ask organizations quite often is how many servers do they have or how many assets are in your environment? And majority of the time, they'll have no answer to that or just throw out a random number. And that is a problem. So I went and did some research to try and find a tool that could help tackle this problem for clients. When it comes to cybersecurity, and I'm sure in a lot of other industries as well, you'll often hear the saying of, you can't protect what you can't see. And without understanding what assets you have in your organization, it can cause major headaches and could lead to a successful compromise down the road. Which is why in today's video, I wanted to introduce you to a tool called Run Zero, where you can get started right away to quickly identify assets in your environment. And no, I am not sponsored by them. Before we begin, let's go over what exactly is Run Zero. On their site, the Run Zero platform gives you unprecedented visibility across IT, OT, and IoT, including discovering risky, unknown, and unmanaged assets, aka Shadow IT. And this is huge, especially with the rise in Shadow IT. To put in simple terms, Shadow IT is essentially something that is used within the environment where the IT and security teams are not aware of. For example, if I were to bring my personal laptop and physically connected it into the company's network, my personal laptop would be considered shadow IT because it is not managed, nor would it be something the IT and security team is aware of. By knowing this, you could probably see how powerful a tool such as Run Zero could be if it does what it says it does, because keeping track of shadow IT can be quite tough. Scrolling down, we can get complete visibility and uncover exposure in minutes with no agents required, which is quite interesting. The Run Zero platform discovers assets by using three different approaches. The first one being active scanning, second is passive, and third is API integrations. By using different approaches, it'll allow Run Zero to try and obtain as much information as possible from your assets. The best part, they offer a community edition that is fully functional up to 100 assets, which is perfect for small businesses. And I'll leave a link down below for you to learn more about its capabilities. Now that you know what Run Zero is, how do you get started? To get started, you wanna head over to runzero.com and select start your free trial. From here, you wanna enter in your email address. Now it does say business email, but you can use something like Gmail, for example. Once you've entered in your Gmail account, Run Zero should then send you an activation email. If you didn't get an email, you want to check your spam slash junk folder. After clicking on the activation link, you should be redirected to this page. I'll click on maybe later, but if you want, you can click on get started to get some more information. At the top, you might notice that it says your trial expires in 20 days. However, once our trial expires, we then get downgraded to the community edition, which is still pretty good because if you recall, it does have similar capabilities to the paid one, but it is limited to 100 assets. Starting from the top left corner, we do have what are called data sources. So from here, we can scan, monitor, and integrate. What I'll do in the beginning is scan my network. And currently the computer that I'm on is connected to my lab network. If I take a look at the bottom, it does say no explorers are deployed in organization default. At least one deployed explorer is required to scan internal networks. So why don't we go ahead and deploy our first explorer by clicking on deploy an explorer. Let's take a look here. Run zero explorers are lightweight agents that can be deployed in almost any environment to support fast asset inventory from the run zero console. That sounds pretty promising. For my architecture, I am going to select 64 bit and the operating system is going to be Windows. Click on download run zero. And actually before I do that, it does say Microsoft Windows requires administrative access to a system running Windows Server 2012 or newer for server editions and Windows 10 build 1604 or newer for client editions. Other versions may work, but are not officially supported. Now, if you're not sure what build version you're on, you can go ahead and hit the start menu, type in system and click on system information. From here, we can see our version. In this case, our build is 19044. And that is definitely newer than this one right here. So I say that we're pretty good to go. Let's click on the download run zero explorer and I'll click on open file, select yes. Now this might fail because we did not run this using administrative privileges, but let's just try it out. 
Okay, after a couple of minutes, our window automatically closes. I am assuming that is a good sign. I do want to take note of the system requirements, in particularly the minimum system requirements. We have three right here, where it says processor running at 2.0 gigahertz or faster, at least 16 gigs of memory or eight gigs for small environments, and at least one gig of free storage space. Do keep this in mind if you do plan on spinning this up for yourself. Over on the left hand side, I am going to select view explorers because I did double click it. And let's see if our explorer exists. So it does say online under the up column. It does have our windows name, our IP address and our online status, which is connected since two minutes ago. Now that we've confirmed that our explorer is installed, how about we start our first scan? Let's go back over to our scan at the top left corner. And as you currently see, we have zero under active processing scheduled and failed over on the right hand side. I am going to select start standard scan and let's modify our scan configuration for the scan name. I will say my defer dash test for the Explorer that I'll be using is going to be my computer that is on the lab network. As for the scan rate, I am going to leave it as 1000. So this specifies the overall maximum rate for the discovery process in packets per second. If you highlight over the question mark, it says 500 is conservative, 3000 works for most lands, 10,000 or more may be helpful for large sites with fast connectivity. In our case, leaving it as 1000 should be sufficient. However, if you like, you can change it over to 3000 since it does say 3000 works for most lands. Under the discovery scope, I am going to leave it as 192.168.100.0 slash 24 because this right here is my lab network range. And in your case, your IP range is likely going to be different than mine. So I would recommend that you input your IP range that you want discovered. For the scan description, again, I'll say my DFIR dash test. As for the start time, I am going to select start time is specified as UTC slash GMT. Under the scheduling grace period, let's see, specify the number of hours to wait for an available explorer before giving up on the scan. Four hours seems to be pretty generous, so I'll leave it as that. The scan frequency is going to be once, but you can set this, for example, hourly or daily or even weekly. I'll click on initialize scan. And we do get a chance to review our settings before we actually scan. Just double checking to make sure my IP range is correct. 192.168.100.0 slash 24. So that's good. Again, yours is going to be different. So you do want to make sure that you input your IP range of interest in that discovery configuration. I'll click on confirm and off we go. I'll wait just a couple minutes and come back to the scan once it's completed. After about two minutes and 12 seconds, our scan is completed. Taking a look on the right hand side, we do get our change summary. So there are eight newly discovered assets. If you were to schedule this, for example, every week, hopefully you will discover shadow IT within your environment. Let's select view more details. And if I scroll down, we can see our newly discovered assets. There's a VMware ESXi, Ubuntu Linux 22.04, and there's also two Windows 10 machines along with another Ubuntu Linux 22.04. What I'll do here is click on my Linux 22.04, which is my Suricata machine. And let's see what it can tell us about this particular virtual machine here. Under the asset information, we do have our first and last scene. There is a risk category that we can manually modify and criticality, which is quite nice. You could imagine that if this was a VIP machine, we can set the criticality to critical, or we can set the risk to critical as well. We could also add in tags to help us manage our assets. For example, let's say that this asset is supposed to have SSH access. We could put in SSH dash server. Or if this was a Windows machine and offers RDP, we can do RDP server as well. We do also have the option to include a comment, which could be pretty handy. On the right hand side, under run zero attributes, we can see the fingerprint results that run zero had retrieved. Scrolling down, we do have the addresses. There is also a host name. So if I select that, it does say Suricata. And it also has our MAC address. 
There is a section for vulnerabilities as well, which is quite nice. It says, no vulnerabilities have been identified. Scan your networks or enable an integration to populate this list. Well, we did scan our networks already, but we haven't enabled an integration. I'll come back to this afterwards to see what kind of options we can play around with. Continuing to scroll down, we do have a software category, which is again, really nice to have. Because not only are you building an asset list now, you're also including software as well. So if there was an outdated software or there was a vulnerability for a particular software package, you could quickly search in your environment, hey, do I have this vulnerable software? And then from there, you can see what kind of assets have that particular software. And finally, we have our service protocols. There is ARP, ICMP, and SSH. I am going to scroll back up under vulnerabilities and select enable an integration to see what we have. And let's take a look. We have AWS, Azure Active Directory. Hey, Census is quite nice. Cisco, CrowdStrike, Google, Defender, and just a bunch of integrations here. You could also create your own custom integration if you want. And hey, look at that, Splunk and Tines. If I wanted to enrich my data, I could integrate something like Tenable. So that way, when I scan my assets for vulnerabilities, any vulnerabilities that were identified can be found under my run zero. That way I can have everything in one single pane of glass. Over on the left-hand side, I am going to select inventory. And under my assets, I did select Ubuntu Linux 22.04. But this time, let's select our Windows 10 virtual machine. I do want to see if Run0 identified any other information that was different than the Ubuntu virtual machine. We do have our asset information and our fingerprint. Let's scroll down here and ooh, we do get one vulnerability that our Ubuntu server did not have. This one is policy SMB signing not required. What happens if we click on it and nothing appears to happen, okay? What about view more details on the right? Let's see here. Description identifies SMB services that do not require signing. No CVEs found for this vulnerability. And it doesn't really give us too much information. I mean, the solution is blank. This is where we can start again, integrating other services such as Tenable to get additional information. Looking at our software, there is nothing here, but we do have a couple more service protocols. We have ARP, EPM, ICMP, RDP, SMB2 and 3, and TLS. And then we get more detailed information at the bottom. But overall, this is pretty cool. Taking a look at our inventory on the left-hand side, I am going to select vulnerabilities. And right here is our vulnerability inventory. Again, if our scan was set to daily or weekly or monthly, after each successful scan, if Run0 were to identify vulnerabilities, it would be put right here. And then we can see our asset count and we could drill in by clicking on the number. And we do see our Windows computer that has this vulnerability. The next option I wanna check out are the queries. So I'll select queries on the left-hand side. And from here, we can begin querying our assets that meet a certain criteria. For example, let's imagine that we have Palo Alto networks in our environment. And if we highlight over this Palo Alto query, it says identify systems running pan OS vulnerable to remote code execution. And if I were to click on that, it will show us exactly what this particular query does. We could select test query, and then it will update our query and run automatically. We could see that it is looking for assets that are online and has an operating system of pan-os. Now I could go ahead and modify this to say win, and we can see two assets that match our criteria. Now, this is a very high level overview of Run0 and I am very aware of that, but I would highly recommend that you try and play around with this because again, it can be quite powerful in your environment, especially if you want to identify shadow IT and having the capability of answering the question, how many assets do you have in your environment or are we vulnerable to this particular vulnerability? And without understanding what assets you have, and this includes both your endpoints and software, Protecting your organization can be quite difficult. Understanding and tracking what assets you have in your environment is extremely important. Even more important than having an EDR or SIM solution, in my opinion. Because as mentioned earlier, you can't protect what you can't see. What I want you to do next is to set up Run0 in your lab environment and do try it out. 
See what you can do with the tool and how it can benefit your organization. And if you are trying to get into cybersecurity, perhaps this is something you can start documenting. Talk about the importance of asset management and how you're able to use a tool to keep track of your assets. The more you know, the better you become. That is it for the video and I hope you found that informative. If you did, let me know by hitting that like button and subscribe if you want to. Remember to stay curious and do things differently.